tomatoes shooting all over the place. Let's take a look. Nice. Nice. All right, so apparently not everyone makes tuna fish the same. A, f a neighbor of mine tried a tuna fish sandwich I made and they were like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. And I'm like, it's tuna fish. You, you open a can, put mayo in it and stuff. And I, uh, but apparently they like the way I make it. Um, with that in mind, I remember years ago when I was in high school and I used to hang out with my friends I recall going to a diner and someone ordering a tuna melt and I thought that that was the most disgusting thing ever because <laughs> at the time you know I was younger I never heard of mixing fish with cheese like that as I got older I tried it and I thought it was really really good really good and in one of the Avenger movies if you remember Wong wanted a tuna melt from some diner and Doctor Strange was... Anyway, that's we're getting off topic. All right, so let me show you how I make, how I season canned tuna and I might as well show you how to make a tuna melt my style. All right. All right, so here we go. Let me show you how I prepare this tuna fish. So this is a can of tuna drained and I put it into this bowl, of course, as you can see. I've heard, I've heard that light tuna is actually better for you. You know, you supposedly you're not supposed to eat tuna every so often, maybe once a week. Um, so we have that there. Uh, to this, I'm going to add a pinch of black pepper to taste. Maybe a little more. I'm going to add some garlic powder to taste. You don't know what that's like, which is fine. To this, I'm going to add some bell pepper. We got two slivers of red and two of orange and half of a small onion. This uh, gives it a nice flavor. I mean, in my opinion, what you can do is you can save your uh, bell peppers by slicing them into slivers and freezing them. And then when you use them, when you need to use them, you know, just run them through warm water. And um, if they release a lot of water, you just get a little piece of uh, paper towel, squeeze down on them. Make sure the paper towel won't release a lot of lint. I'm going to put that right in here. With my fish, I'm not going to add salt because fish is salty and half of a small onion. I'm gonna dice this bad boy right up. And you, don't, you actually don't have to cut it that way, but whatever. That's a lot. That's actually plenty. Um, but I don't wanna waste it, so going right in there. Okay, so we seasoned it. We got vegetables in there. The rest of that onion I'm going to save. Um, to that, I'm going to add two things that, one, you know, this is a dollop of mayonnaise. I don't like a lot of mayonnaise and stuff, but so you go ahead and do you, however you decide to, you know, Season it. Let me straighten the camera out here. I'm crooked. Um, to that, and please believe me on this. Please believe me on this. We're going to add spicy brown mustard. About a quarter of the amount of the mayonnaise. Okay? So a quarter of the spicy brown mustard to whatever the amount of mayonnaise you use. And of course, you know mix it around you got black pepper in there you got the veggies you got the garlic powder and everything else all right this is i don't know this is how i do it I, I, apparently this is like the greatest thing for some people 
On the side I got some lettuce and tomato and I'm going to toast some bread in the oven. This is some nice multigrain bread from a company called Bread Alone. They have the basic ingredients to bread, no funky stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cheese on here. Yes, it sounds disgusting, maybe to some people. Uh, fish and cheese or mustard inside the mix there, but believe me, it's going to be good. Let me get my cheese ready. Okay, so I'm going to go with a cheddar and Monterey Jack mix. And I'm going to put a slice on each slice. Slice for a slice. Does that make sense? Slice for a slice. And again, maybe this is the simplest thing to you ever, but apparently for some people that I know, it's not. It's like, <laughs> I don't understand why this is exotic. Okay, my oven's at 300. I'm going to place these on a nice, I have like a, um, a, a pan for pizza. So I'm just going to place this on this pizza pan that I have here. Slip them in the oven. It shouldn't even take five minutes. And that cheese should melt nicely. Um, my kitchen's a mess. I don't want you to see everything I have. All right, I'm just going to stick that in the oven. 300, it should take a couple of minutes. And we'll come back to it. All right, so here's my bread straight out the oven. Didn't take too long. I did put an extra slice of cheese on each. And um, yeah, this took like four minutes. Just you want the cheese to get nice and melty. Okay, and it toasts on the other side nicely as well. So what are you going to do? What do you think you're going to do? You're just going to plop some of that mixture there. You know, under any other circumstance, I would have put maybe, I've seen people put like, dried cranberries in their tuna. I haven't tried that, but I've heard. I don't know if that's good. I should try it because I didn't like this before when I was younger. So, okay. All right. And one can is enough for about two sandwiches. So I can serve this like this, or I can take an extra step Put some lettuce. I should have actually put the tuna on the bed of lettuce, but that's fine. Some tomatoes here. And so we'll have two versions here. One with and one without. Alright, so that's how I make, that's how I season my tuna. And that's how you can make yourself a tuna melt. See there, See there? the uh, cheese is nice and melty on both sides. This one, no lettuce or tomato, but still. I hope you try this instead of just making tuna the regular way. And I will have to try it the way I mentioned it with uh, some sort of, uh, well, some other stuff. Mmm. Mmm. Well, I knew it was going to be yummy. But, um, yeah. So, again, if you like tuna, try this. Peace.